Well, hello everyone. It has been a minute, as the Americans say. My last video was in October 2018, shortly after moving to Bakersfield, California, in the United States of America. At the time, I imagined that nothing really would change all that much. Uh, well, I was very wrong. <laughs> uh, immigrating to the United States ended up being far more challenging than I had ever imagined. Um, arriving in mid-October 2018, with the dog and the wife. We were hosted by my in-laws in Bakersfield, California. Now, I am forever grateful to them because out here, uh, our start was not particularly stellar. Um, I really started, I uh, really struggled to get started here, to set, to get settled. Um, first, I needed a green card because you can't really do anything without a green card as a foreigner in America. Um, and the visa they stick in your passport, uh, while it lets you into the United States, it doesn't really do much for you once you're on the other side of the border. You then have to pay more money to get the residence card, and then this allows you to get a social security number, uh, which is like a national insurance number for my uh, viewers in the U UK. Um, and I needed that social security number to get my driver's license in California. Um, and of course, as luck would have it, in winter 2018, there was a budget deadlock and the federal government shut down. So uh, anyway, <laughs> I think it was well into 2019 before I was able to get all my papers in order and actually, you know, start working in the United States. Uh, the second struggle was, of course, now that I could apply, I wasn't having much joy. Um, partly it was being a foreigner uh, with my quote-unquote British accent. Um, and my rather odd educational and work history, um, Bakersfield was not kind. Um, it is very much an oil and agriculture kind of town. Uh, and it's very sort of little America, America first leaning. So again, being a dodgy foreigner was not exactly helpful. Um, and after being basically told by uh, recruiters that I wasn't going to have much luck uh, in the industry which I had previously worked in, which was construction, I, um, I retrained and got a job in IT. So uh, I used 2019 to essentially retrain as a network engineer. And then in the meantime, I'd worked in some menial roles uh, just to get some cash flowing in. Uh, you know, I worked as like a beekeeper and amongst other things. Um, in early 2020, I uh, finally, you know, having having completed my certification, uh, I uh, my Cisco certification, I then f went and got a job as an IT engineer with a very large multinational company. And since then, I haven't really looked back. So, um, so if we look at 2020, I was in Bakersfield, California with a solid job uh, and the security that that brought. Uh, you might wonder, well, why no painting? Well, as I mentioned, I was living with my in-laws initially, and then when we did move out and rent our own place, uh, we were sharing the house with uh, several other people. So I didn't really have a dedicated space to sit and paint. I mean, my wife doesn't exactly appreciate the room being an explosion of um, paints and miniatures, as I'm sure many of you will um, no doubt sympathize with me. Um, I did try and set up like a mobile paint station that I could put away when it wasn't in use, but really the sort of the back and forth of, you know, putting it together and then unpacking it and stuff really just didn't inspire me to do much painting. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that the weather in Bakersfield is not kind to the painter. It is a hot, dry, almost desert-like climate. So you fight your paints all the way. And then, of course, because it is so hot, I mean, we're hitting sort of in Fahrenheit over the hundreds a lot of the time. Uh, in Celsius, that would be in the 40s. Um, even with the air conditioning on, again, that's just drying your air out and then you just feel like you're constantly fighting your paints and a lot of the paints are going to waste. So again, without a dedicated space for painting, I never really mustered the will to try and work around this problem. Um, the good news was that on the professional side, once I got the new job, I very quickly echeloned into a new role that meant I could basically live wherever I wanted to in the United States, uh, including Hawaii, incidentally. Um, and the job essentially involves either working from home or visiting sites for sort of a week or two weeks at a time. So we, my wife and I bought a house in Washington State. Uh, we gathered up our possessions and uh, now two dogs 
and off we went to climates more to our taste. Um, so uh, we then shot up the west coast and moved to a place called Point Roberts, Washington. Um, right, so we bought a house in one of the strangest little patches of America, Point Roberts. I plan to do a little video on this very remarkable place uh, at some point um, because I think it's worth a video. <laughs> the location is incredibly bizarre, um, but it's actually quite well suited to us. Uh, the weather is more like the UK, which both myself and my wife Catherine uh, uh, in prefer over the uh, the very hot and dry California weather we were used to. Given that we lived in the UK for a long time, uh, that makes sense. Um, and then the house itself is uh, is located really close to Canada, as you can see on the map, and uh, so we have access to both Vancouver. Um, British Columbia, Victoria Island, but then also we're just a stone's throw from the United States itself, so it's kind of the best of both worlds, really. Um, and then finally, the best part of the new house is, uh, additionally, <laughs> alongside living close to the sea and all that jazz, uh, the house has a basement floor. Um, it has a whole basement that has an enormous amount of space, including a den area, so there's like a living room uh, area that we sort of hang out in. Um, so I swiftly annexed a corner for the hobby, which is now my permanent emplacement. Uh, the cooler climate and being near the sea is really what we wanted, so um, I now spend my evenings at home in my den with a, you know, with a, with a scotch to warm my bones um, while my faithful hounds snooze on their little beds next to me. Um, and you know, the other benefit is that Catherine can sort of ensconce herself downstairs, uh, maybe watch some TV or something or read her book. So as a family, we just have a very communal space where we're not sort of on top of each other and we can kind of potter and do our old, uh, you know, our own thing. All right. So then um, two of these big changes, first having moved to Point Roberts, uh, having moved to Point Roberts, is that I'm a, I'm a lot more outdoors right now. Um, I'm right by the sea. Uh, I take the dogs out three times a day. Bakersfield was hot <laughs> all the time, um, except for a 10 minute window around Christmas time. <laughs> um, but it was very, very hot. And so uh, you tended to just stay indoors. Uh, there's also the problem of valley fever, which is a, a spore that lives in the soil of the San Joaquin Valley. And uh, any wind that, that might sort of blow has the risk of kicking that up. And actually, if you breathe that in, you, you're, you've got it for life. There's no, there's no real way of getting rid of it. Um, so you hide indoors because of the heat and because of the dust and you drive everywhere because nothing is close. Um, so my outdoor activities in Bakersfield were limited to largely walking the dogs um, and it was usually very early and very late uh, to avoid the heat. Um, you know, their feet don't really like hot surfaces. Um, but now, uh, I mean, I walk the dogs three times a day sometimes, you know, in the middle of the day if I take a break from work, I just take them down to the beach and uh, off we go um, and then you know or oh, I can go up to the forests I mean I have options right so my health is far better now than it was in California I sleep better because I'm not sleeping in air conditioning I don't have to breathe that dry air conditioned gross air in it's just much more my kind of uh, speed um, and the other big changes uh, changes that I just find myself less interested in video games <laughs> and the and the allure of my lead pile calls to me once more um, you know, I stand at the foot of Lead Mountain and I stare up. Um, and uh, I just I honestly think, and I, I know I said it before, but I think it's to do with the fact that I'm not suffering the sort of zombifying effects of air conditioning. Um, because I fly a lot, I notice that that sort of conditioned air just isn't good for me. Um, it turns me into a congested mess and I really, really feel pretty awful. When I come home, I sort of recover and then I feel great. Um, so... Uh, you know, with all that said, I've been rediscovering the joys of the wargaming hobby. I have the space, I've got, you know, the, the environment for it, um, and the support of my wife, who's far more keen than I, that I play with toy soldiers than sit and play, you know, on a PlayStation or a computer. Um, and then the other thing as well is that I recently went on a one month long holiday. Um, so in the States, we don't get much vacation time, as they call it here, or personal time off. So I banked all of mine and then spent it on a, on a month away from work after a very long and productive year. 
uh, very hard and productive year of work. And so I, um, we went to Greece and we went to the UK uh, to visit family and friends and such. And then um, one of the things, because I, I couldn't paint, of course, one of the things I did do was uh, watch an inordinate amount of uh, YouTube. Uh, and I've been catching up most, more specifically on Ralph Astley's videos, who I must admit I have missed watching. Uh, he is one of the one of my favorite voices in the YouTube community, um, not just in the wargaming community, but actually just enjoys content in general. Um, and uh, as I'm sitting in, in, in Europe, far away from all my toy soldiers, uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was, I was getting a little bit jealous, you know, and uh, I thought, you know, when I get back, the first thing I should do is make a video. So this is it. Um, right, so I also managed to pop into the uh, warfare show uh, in Farnborough, which used to be in Reading, uh, while I was there in the last weekend of my time in, in the UK. So that was a real treat, and I got to go and spend a, a stupid amount of money on toy soldiers um, to just add to the Lead Mountain. The other thing I've done is uh, I finally um, have actually boxed up all of Lead Mountain, and I have it and several books and such packed and ready to go. My brother is moving to Texas in February with his wife uh, and they are shipping a lot of stuff over. So I'm just gonna piggyback on their shipment and they're gonna, I'll go and pick it up in Texas. Bit of a drive, but worth it. I mean, I'm gonna go visit them anyway, so why not, right? Yeah, okay, so uh, I'll, uh, just to wrap it up, uh, first, just to say I'm back. Um, I'm hoping to make some more videos. I'm also trying to figure out how to do this with a, a non-Macintosh computer because I don't have one of those anymore. Um, I hope this video is okay and uh, that the quality is all right and that people are happy watching it. Um, then I have some uh, some painting and modeling videos I'd like to make. Uh, and then uh, I also want to sort of make some less Wargaming-centric stuff as well. Uh, I know this channel is called Zen in the Art of Miniature Painting, but I think that a lot of what I've enjoyed the most watching uh, recently in the community is realizing that people who make these videos about a topic that we like are just humans like us. And, um, you know, I enjoy watching Ian's videos about his prep for winter and what life is up like, uh, what life is like up on the Yorkshire coast. Uh, seeing his videos of the erosion at Mapleton and seeing Ralph's videos. Uh, you know, of the ships and all that coming in, and he's just general sort of ramble videos, which I think are really enjoyable for me uh, to consume uh, and to watch. Uh, and then I, I, obviously, there's a lot of wargaming stuff I watch, but, uh, you know, I, I think that we don't want to get too navel-gazy um, and too sort of focused purely on the toy soldiers. Uh, there's a lot of sort of ancillary stuff that's worth talking about, I think. Um, right, uh, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, it's a, bit, a little bit of a long video, but um, rest assured I am working on the toys, as usual. And I'll be sure to send out a, a uh, an update soon. So thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.